Hi and welcome to this video. It's on setting up contact as a multi using the MPE mode still in MIDI Guitar 3, being able to use polyphonic bands. Both of these instruments, both the steel string and the nylon acoustic, are creations of Mike Georgiadis. And I've set these up as multis in contact, respectively, so there are two instruments. And I have a pedal so I can switch between these. But let's listen first to how the nylon strings sound directly from Spitfire Audio. It's a beautiful instrument, no doubt about that. It sounds great, but it has no bends. And that's really, really problematic for me. Since we're using MIDI Guitar 3 and we have this MPE capabilities and we have the polyphonic bands, I want to be able to use bands together with any instrument that I have. So this is going to introduce a difference in how I'm setting these two up in contact. But let's go over the way to set up one of these to begin with. I'm going to open, first of all, a new contact container. So into Native Instruments, open Contact 7, and here's the soft acoustic guitar. Let's just take the first MD soft acoustic guitar here. As you open most instruments in Contact, it's set up to Omni, which means it's receiving on all channels. And since we are playing an MPE instrument right now, we're sending on multiple channels, but MPE differs from the way that traditional MIDI is set up, where we usually send on one channel at a time. This instrument is playable as it is. So I want to add, say, bends to this. I'll change the bend range to two, which is the standard for most contact instruments. I have bends now, but what I don't have is polyphonic bends. I can't bend two notes simultaneously. For us to be able to use MPE together with our guitars makes me want all my instruments be it contact or whatever else, have polyphonic bands. That's the most fundamental property I'm looking for. I'm gonna use this as my template. This is how I want the instrument to sound when I'm done. I'll go and save this as MG Soft Acoustic Guitar Template. As soon as I refresh here, I go in again and you'll have the template. I'm going to use this template. This is the way I want the instrument to react. Put it here. Minimize so that you see what is happening. And I'll put it here six times. Now all of these instruments are set to receive on Omni, so all of these instances receive all of the information on all channels, which is not what we want. We're sending general information on MIDI channel 1, channels 2 to 7 for our note values. So I'll change this first to 2. I'll change the second one to 3 and so on. And once I've done this, I'll go in here and I'll save this multi as whatever you want to call it. You can see the different channels here. The first one is channel 2, the second one 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And the first note I'm playing under any circumstance, it doesn't matter where I am on my guitar of course, it's going to be on channel 2. And this is how MIDI guitar sends out its information. Any two note chords will be using channel two and three. Any three note chords you will be using two, three and four. So 
So there you see that I'm using all six. And here's where the most important difference between old school MIDI 1.0 and MPE appears. We're sending the pitch bend information together with the note information, the strike information, the aftertouch information on a per note per channel basis, going directly to that instance of instrument in this multi. So now we have these two instruments side by side here and I can go between them using my pedal down here. But remember in the beginning I said that the soft nylon, it didn't work with bends to begin with. This is a thing that the developer safeguarded against. He excluded bends from the guitar altogether. And this cogwheel symbol in any contact instrument means that it's locked for us to go in and, and change. It's locked in this other guitar as well, but there at least we have bends to begin with. Switching over to the nylon acoustic, you'll find something interesting here. I, obviously I have a pitch band here, which I said wasn't available. Uh, I had another company come to my rescue here. They made me aware that they had this little script. This is the Grumpy Monkey Pitch Wheel Override. It overrides the default setting of not being able to use a global setting. So it being a global setting means that it's not affecting the instrument on a per note basis. They're affecting the instrument as a patch, as a whole, which gives us the old kind of MIDI 1.0 pitch bands that we had before. Bands, but they're limited to the way that it has always worked. But it's better than nothing, because then I can start using my vibrato for these instruments. Maybe I need to point out that obviously if you're gonna introduce bends globally this way, there's no use in setting up with these six channels for this nylon string in particular. With the soft acoustic guitar, and with the instruments that I'm going to show you going forward here, there's absolutely this gain of, of setting up with these six channels as a multi for MPE control. another patch where I'm using these contact multis. Here I'm using the JV145 arch top from uh, Straight Ahead. This is by far the most playable jazz guitar for contact that I've ever played. It's, it plays like a real guitar for me. It's, it's like you want to start do those things you know that aren't supposed to work for a MIDI guitar but you forget about the connection. But perhaps the next multi is the most interesting in terms of setting up and we will attempt to set up CC74 as well for this for you to get some ideas on how to get started. This is called the Preparado guitar and it's prepared guitar. It's no longer the same instrument that I've sort of copied six times. First one's called three guitars, the second one's called e-guitar, sunshine, angelic dampened, L particles. I think we have two nylons in, at the end as well. So this one is interesting already from that perspective that it's not the same stuff that we're trying to use. So the first note is just a single note. But if I, on the other hand, add one note, so now I'm playing an interval and freezing everything with my pedal. I get this plucking from this second uh, instance of this multi. To further complicate things, each and every one of these instruments have four different slots for different articulations in and of themselves. Listen to what happens if I'm changing one of these manually like this. Quite obvious impact on the character of the sound, right? Let's say I want this 
and particles things to be affected by CC74. A little caveat to begin with. As I'm trying to explain how to use brightness via CC74 into contact to control certain aspects of the instrument, I am setting up with a modulator. This isn't really necessary. You have a perfectly fine brightness concept coming in even though you haven't connected any wires to your instrument. So just remember to turn up the CC74 knob on the contact module to have that information coming in. I will go on to explain how to set up with the modulator just to give you even more opportunities to hands-on make a difference in how that information is conveyed. I've opened up a slot here where I can put a modulator in. Now I have a modulator and I have the brightness and that's the part I want to use. If we use brightness from the modulator going into contact, just going to connect it to CC74 on the contact module here. And open the multi again. Learn MIDI CC automation. Let's go in and see what happens here. Now I want to see some movement here in the L particles part. Now, the first note in any interval that I'm playing is just going to be this guitar note. So I'm not really interested in modulating that as we go along. But since the second sound, the second note in any chord, is one of these sounds that are continuing, I'm interested in manipulating that in some way that's interesting to me. And this is depending on what I do with the brightness envelope. I can have it move even more distinctly by connecting it to, say, a, a sign. And if I connect the sign, I want to connect the sign to a handle and not directly to the CC74, because then we don't have any true polyphonic interpretation of this brightness anymore. Perhaps I don't want this to be so fast, so I'll just pull down the frequency a bit. Let's check out this L particles orange meter here. The sign envelope is what is deciding how the L particles part of this particular instance of the preparado guitar is moving. And so I can go to the next instrument, go in in the same way here and look at what things do we have? Okay, so we have the L particles here as well. Let's do the same thing for that. So now this too is connected to the brightness part. So it's indeed the sine curve controlling the way that the brightness information is, is modulated. But it's still brightness going into to contact here. So I'm now controlling two different instances in this patch with my CC74 coming from brightness here. But this is just a way for me to show that you can use different instruments all together and you can affect different parts just by connecting your CC74 perhaps by the learn function, which obviously is the easiest way to connect things. This is all rather technical and I know that for anybody that hasn't done a lot of stuff with MIDI, this might even be intimidating, but experiment and try things out. You won't break anything. I'll be returning more with the modulator in another video. So until then, bye, see ya.